Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to cover creating a digital painting with ease using the incredible program Topaz Studio 2. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to Creative Photography with Lori. Today, I have been editing this still life image and I was using a program called Topaz Studio 2. I don't think I've shared a video with you in quite a while about Topaz Studio 2. So I thought today I'd show you how I edited this image. Now, if you are new to the program Topaz Studio 2, it's a different program within the Topaz family. The link to where you can review the program, the software, and purchase it is in the description of this video. So the program Topaz was created for creative photographers. It is 100% a creative photography tool, and you'll get to see that in just a minute. So let's jump into this image. First thing I did is you can see here on the left of my screen, I'm in Lightroom. I did some basic edits. I will show you the true before. So this image was shot underexposed because I had so much bright light coming in on the right from a window. And I did not shoot this with flash or any other light, so I needed to brighten the other parts of the still life image. So to do that, I added some mask here in Lightroom with different mask tools to enhance the image. And I also did um, a point tone curve adjustment to just brighten the overall midtones. And that's all I did with the image to get started. At this point, I knew that I wanted to make this look very painterly, impressionistic, old Dutch style still life. And so to do that, the absolute best program is Topaz Studio 2. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to go to edit in Topaz Studio 2. And what's great is it works seamlessly with Lightroom. So what will happen now is it's preparing the file. It's going to make a copy of the image and take it into Topaz. And when I bring it back into Lightroom, I'll have the new version as well as this current version. So it doesn't override your existing, which is, is great. Now it'll take just a minute to load. It's almost ready. And it's going to open Topaz Studio 2 for us and bring the image in. All right, so we're here. Now, for this image, I had a couple ideas, and the first was to use one of the preset looks that come with Topaz. So my favorite preset for flowers is the fur and feathers. What this preset does is it brings out all the lines and detail. So we can see that right here in the image, and I don't want it at 100%, so I'm gonna reduce the amount and probably come down to maybe about 20 to 30 percent. So I'm just going to reduce that a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to click apply. Now, the beauty of Topaz is there is a mask option. So I know that I want to bring back a little bit more detail in the center of this center flower. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the mask. I'm right here with the fur and feathers preset, but I'm going to go to the mask, use a brush, and I only want the brush mass to be maybe at about 50%. So I'm going to come in and just bring back a little bit of that detail. And if I want to bring back a little more, I can make my brush a little bit more gray. There we go. Just bringing that detail back. Now, if I was all the way at black, it would bring back all of it, which wouldn't look accurate with the rest of the painting. So I'm going to undo that and keep it at that um, kind of 50% range. So just brush that in. Okay, so now that I've done this look, I could be, I could be satisfied with this. It's, it's, it's hitting most of the marks, but I wanna add another additional layer to this. So I'm going to go to Add Filter, and one of my favorite tools is the Impression um, Brush, which is underneath Stylistic. So we're gonna click on Impression, and here we have several brush strokes. And what I like to do is kind of play with those to see what suits the image. But if you notice, it's making all these white painting marks on the image. And what that is, is a texture. So over here on the very far right, there is a slide bar. 
And if you go all the way down, there's the option for texture. And this is really a trick to using this part of the program. Once you click on texture, you can scroll down more and you'll notice that it's picked a texture and it has it under solid. What we want to do is click on original. That is going to get rid of those texture marks and we also can make sure our texture strength is at zero. Okay, so now that we've cleaned that up, I'm going to scroll all the way back up and now we're going to look at different brush strokes to see how they impact this image. And it's really a personal choice of what you like. For this image, I decided to use the number 12. I like that option a lot. I can show you some of the others. So nine is much more impressionistic. You've got type 11, type 10, so just different strokes. I felt like number 12 um, worked better for the overall image and gave it the quality that I wanted. Now again, this is at 100% opacity. So what I'm going to do is bring that opacity down um, just a little bit to, to bring back a little bit more of the original detail and to truly make it look a little bit more like a painting than maybe an abstract. So you can play with how much opacity. So just kind of play with that. Now the next thing you can do is there's number of strokes. So you can alter if we wanted to go to high. You can see that um, that is giving, actually it's kind of smoothing out the strokes. If we go to low, it's going to be a little bit more kind of an abstract look. I typically keep it on medium, um, but I do think for this image I prefer the high because it's not doing so much overlay on the parts of the, the black parts of our image. Now there's also brush size and paint volume. So you can increase the paint volume to really um, bring that out. And I do think for this image I like the paint volume a little bit higher. And at any point you can put your hand over your image and you can see before and after. So we're slowly getting this kind of Dutch master impressionistic painting look. So I like that paint volume a little bit higher. There's also an option as we scroll down, paint progress. So this is one that you may not think to use. I'm going to take it all the way over to zero and you can see it almost really smooths out the image and takes it back to just our fur and feathers. So um, if we basically it's it's removing this effect. It's not quite opacity. It's really that it's a painting progress tool, I guess the only way to describe it. So what I'm going to do is increase it and we can start to see how it paints the image. So it's feels like it's similar to opacity, but it's it's just another way that you can tweak the image um, as you're working on it. So you can kind of leave that down or you can raise it up and that's kind of like how much has been painted. So I'm going to keep it pretty high today. I do, um, I do like that. Now you also have some options right here to go ahead and work on your color. So if you wanted to saturate, maybe the colors got a little muted, you could play with some overall saturation. You could also do particular colors. You can also come down to lighting and sometimes adding one of these creative effects does alter your lighting. So I may want to add just a little contrast. Really want that kind of dark moody look and um, highlights. See what happens if I take that down just a little bit. You can add a vignette if you needed to. And of course, you could add a texture if you um, felt like you wanted one. There's all kinds of textures that you can apply to your image. And you can do those in a really subtle way. Um, I can show you if we do this paper. I don't even think that, um, let's see if we raise it all the way up. I think because this is a black background, I'm not sure that you're even going to notice it. So I think we would have to do something a little bit more drastic. So I'm going to go ahead and take that back. Oh, there it is. It's showing up on the actual image and we would not want that texture on our flowers. So 
Um, and then if we go down to background type, again, we said original. So we want that original background, not something altered. Okay, so I've done, I think, everything I wanted to do with this impressionistic painting look. There is a mask option here. And so just like we applied the mask to fern feathers, I want to do the same with this center flower. So I'm gonna click on the mask and it's gonna take just a minute and it will load here. So it's giving us a white mask. I'm going to grab my brush and again, to brush on and reveal what's underneath, which is my original image, I only wanna do it at about 50%. So I'm going to come in and I just want to bring back a little bit of the detail. I want to keep the painting look, but I want a little bit more of the detail. I'm going to make my brush size. Um, let's see, we've got, click on the brush again, and I want my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to bring back a little bit of detail. You have to think, about, you know, if you were a painter, you would bring back some detail after your strokes. So I've still got this impressionistic painting look around, but I just brought back a little detail right there and a little detail in the center of this one. And we also could mask if we don't want some of these brush strokes. We can just come in and soften those around the image. So don't want them to com be completely gone but I don't want maybe as much smudge. So over here, I'm just gonna clean up this little painting smudge just a little bit as I work on the image. Just anywhere where it may be a little distracting, um, I can come in and clean that up just a tiny bit. Okay, so I think at this point, I'm pretty happy with the image. The only thing I notice is this flower is a little bright. So when I take it back into Lightroom, I will adjust that. Now in the image that I had done as a final, I had added a frame to it. So I'll show you that real quick. If you go to add filter, you can do digital frame. And when you're here, you can then um, pick your frame size. So we could increase the frame. We can um, increase the mat, the image depth. So we can do a lot of different things and frame type we could go to color and we can just select a color so I'm just gonna do a black frame and we've got a white mat and I don't think let's see inner edge strength we can increase that so if we want that kind of beveled look you can see I can increase that inner edge strength and really make it have that nice beveled look so that's a fun way if you want to present your image, if you want to see what it would look like framed, you can use this option. So let's go ahead and accept our Topaz edit. And what it's going to do is bring this image directly into Lightroom for us. So you can wait and it will take you back to Lightroom. You can also go back yourself and it's going to load this image as number five. So I've been working on this image several times. So now we've got our image back here and we can see in our history, there's nothing there because this is a brand new image brought in from um, our Topaz. We still have the original file that we were working on, which was over here. And this was my original with all the edits that we had made. And now I have my edited version. And you could rename this if you wanted to. So to finish this image up, I am going to come in and add a new mask. I'm going to select objects and use the brush. And what I want to do, my Lightroom keeps um, flipping out on me when I use the objects tool. It keeps um, moving to another screen as you just saw. So I apologize for that. I'm not sure what the um, the glitch is today. Okay, so we've got this selected now. I used the object mask and I used the square. So at this point, I'm going to just reduce the highlights a little bit on that and reduce the whites. There we go. Now it more closely resembles the rest of the image. And then if I wanted to, I may create another mask. I'm going to use the brush. 
and make the brush a little smaller and I'm just going to pop with the brush around this area and maybe this flower here and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of exposure to just pop those centers just a little bit and brighten them up. I may want to do the same right here and maybe a little around. So just like a painter would come in and add some shadows or some highlights, I just want to give a little final touch around this image to brighten some areas that I want um, a little bit brighter. It's kind of like shaping, shaping the light and bringing out those final, final details. And then at this point, I would be finished with this image. I would probably just zoom in and make sure there are any areas that I want to clean up. If there was any touches that I wanted to do to the colors, I could come in and tweak if I wanted to give a final kind of pop to the purple tones, I could do that as well. So that's my final painted still life image using Topaz Studio 2. Again, the link to Topaz to purchase or review the product is in the description of the video. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more videos using Topaz Studio 2, send me a note in the comments. I use the program quite often and would be glad to continue doing some videos for you. Thanks so much, everybody. Have fun editing.